You, you may be seated. What a great honor that you are granted. Unto a nation that is so deplorable that he commands us, even in our most corrupt state of mind, that he honors and hears the shakha, the offering of gladness unto him, of fatness that he commands us to offer unto him. I'm going to teach a little bit tonight. Is that all right? I've been rolling all week, so I'm going to take my perch here. You're sitting down. Is that all right? Hallelujah. We greet you all that have joined us by via live stream. May the riches of God rest upon you all. Live stream, live video, whatever it may be. May Yah strengthen and cause his riches of his knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach to rest deeply in your bosom that he caused us to delight with great excitement as to what he is doing for Yisrael. So we began to understand that we will not think that our circumstances or situation, that there is some strange encounter that we have encountered. We'll know that as the old Kiroshim would say that Yah has it all on the control. And that is vital for us to understand that Yisrael. We must understand that he is the orchestrator of all, all things, whether it's life, death, trials, afflictions, whatever it is, he is the one that commands, he is the one that has charge, and he is the one that mandates all things. And as we as a nation, once we began to understand that, then to, the legitimacy of our rightful place as a nation Men will begin to see that because we will have a great confidence in our Abba. I did ask for a few moments tonight because I want to teach on a certain passage in the Torah. It has been misaligned. It has been misappropriated. It has been not taught from, from one, one aspect, the historical, the circumstances, the situations that were surrounding the people of Yah. Concerning the window of Hashemayah, the window open unto a nation. You all said that he will pour out great riches. What is that window? And what are the blessings, the berechai, that Yah will pour out upon his people? And I want to bring some light to that, whereby we see in the midst of these adulterated houses of ill repute and holotry, every kind of idolatry type of uh, action and worship is manifest, they began to misappropriate what Yah has said even in the book of Melechia, the messenger or the Melach or the messenger of Yah. He comes in the power, the name, and with the absolute resolution of Yah. So what an Obi speak, it is sealed by the affirmation, the confirmation of the Most High. I'm glad of that. Because he has put his confidence and his trust in the Nobi. The window. What is the blessing? What is the riches collectively upon Yisraya? As a nation we are scattered once we come together from every Shabbats or Unna, every tribe. That we collectively as a people we bring a certain resource that Yah said that will be among his people. And I want to shed a little light on that. But first of all, I want to begin here in the book of Melechiah, the book of Melechiah. In the book of Melechiah, the writing of this Nobi, the prophet. And I want to lay out the circumstance that was pervasive. You're talking about a people that had returned back unto Yerushalayim. There were great agony and pain. This was post-Babylonian exile. And then they had the Persians to rule over them. There was great stress among the people. There was great agony. And they had begun to lo lose their confidence in the Most High. And so he sends a messenger to make comparison as to their states. And the sons of Esav. I want to begin here the book of Malachiah, Malachiah chapter 1. I want to move somewhat expeditiously, and that is quick and fast, because there are some things that I do want to cover quickly. You may not absorb everything, but yet there shall be a comprehension when I finish with this that you will understand that a particular verse. 
that has been misaligned, that has been misappropriated by this religious harlot, we will understand the essence of that tonight, all right? So I want to begin here in Melchiah, the messenger, the Melach, the one that brings the tidings, the truth of Yah reveal unto his nation, his people. It says here in Melchiah chapter 1 verse 1, he talks about the Masa, he says the burden, the Masa, this great uplifting, this great caring, the Masa of the Daba, the word of Yah, to Yisraya, and it was spoken by a Pacific Nobi, Melchia, the messenger, the Melach Ayah, to bring the message, the Bezurak, the teaching, wisdom, and understanding of what was written by the Novi and the prophets before him, that they could understand the conclusion of the whole matter. Yah says this, I have achab you, I have loved you, saith Yah, yet you say, you respond unto me, how, wherein, has you loved us, Yah? We are in great affliction, there's a dearth in the land, there's great poverty, we are suffering immensely, we are sick, we are distraught, how can you say that you love us? And because of that, their faithfulness unto Yah, they became disillusioned, Allah. They were not so ready to offer unto Yah the zadach, the sacrifice that was appropriated unto him. So they say, how end? How have you loved us? And so Yah gives them an answer. He said, was not Esav, Yachob, Ach, was he not his brother? Says the Abba, Yah. And he said, yet I love Yaakob. Did I not love Yaakob? Were they not brothers and yet I elected one? He said, and I saw, nay, I hate it as my enemy with an adversarial type of hatred. And I hated Esau. And look at what he did to Esau. He said, I laid his car. His mountain, his great establishment, his monumental accomplishments. Uh, he said, I laid the mountains of his heritage uh, ways uh, for the tanim, for the dragon, uh, for the encroaching uh, of spirits of powers and shadim demons uh, to rule in the midst of the kingdom of Esav. Uh, he said, and not only that, I left them for the dragons uh, of the midbar of the wilderness, uh, that they were bewildered. They had no, uh, no certain way to pursue, no actual path to walk in. Because when there is a wasteland, which way do you go? There is no way to go, Yisrael. He says, whereas, I want you to make the comparison. Uh, it's what he was speaking to them. He says, whereas, as uh, Edom, Edom uh, says, uh, we are, this is what they said, we are kashab, we are impoverished. That's what Edom said, that's what Edom He said, we are impoverished. We have no uplifting, we have no strength, we are beaten down, we are plowed down, we are plowed under. There is no vitality in us. There is no resolve. There is no resolute nature in us. We cannot get up. We are impoverished, is what Edom says. But we will return and build the desolate place. We will take actions into our own hand. Although the place may be shamad, it may be desolate destroyed without inhabitants we will by our own strength we will build we will restore we will reconstitute we restore the place back to its ambience the beauty the luster this is what we will do by our own hand that this is Esau. hallelujah thus saith almighty Yah of Seva. he is the one of the hosts of the military power of might Yah is they shall build, Yah said, but I will throw it down. They shall call them, they shall call them, they shall be encompassed, they shall call them the borders uh, of wickedness, uh, of Russia, 
of a wicked nature, of wicked counsel, and everything that comes out of the border or out of that domain, it will be of the utmost corruption and wickedness. Everything they do, will uh, it will be projected from a wicked mind, a wicked passion, and the border shall be that of encompass by this wicked nature. And the people against whom Yah, he hath indignation, it did not say for a season, but it uses the words Lulam Viat. Lulam Viat or Ulam simply implies that there is no end, there is no ceasing, it is beyond the expression of eternity or everlasting, so there is no end of the assault that Yah is going to pour out upon this people. There is a reason why. That's why he commands us with Esau, you don't mock, you don't try to throw him down. This is in the hand of Yah. You understand, Yisraya? You don't try to come against him because he is your Ach. He is your Ach, Yisraya. Hallelujah. And this is the enemy that Yah tells us to love, to love your enemy. To love uh, Izam as you love yourself. But look at what Yah says. So he says unto them in his counter pursuit, uh, he said, A son. He honoreth his avata, and a servant and ebbeth his master. Yah says, if, if I then be your Abba, if I be the one that has progenerated you, uh, if your life and your strength has come from me, uh, he says, wherein is my gadul? Where is my great honor? Where is the magnitude of my honor that you should offer unto me? And if I be your master, where is my fear, my yira? Where is the fear, the reverence, the honor, the trembling of Yah? Where is it if I be the one that, uh, if I'm the one that is in command of your life, if I'm the one that instructs you in what life Chayil is, uh, in the strength of life, uh, where is my honor, he says, uh, says Yah of hosts unto you. And he talks about the Kohim. He said, oh, Kohim, oh, priest, you despise my name. You literally, you... Bazaar, you hate, you have contempt, you reject, you despise my name, and yet you respond unto me, it says, wherein, almighty, oh Yah, have we bazaar? Where have we despised your name? Listen to Yah now. You must understand the great agony of this nation, this people, like those that are spreaded throughout the nations of the world. We need Yah to open the window of Hashemaam. We need for Almighty Yah to do that for us, Yisraya. His Aruba, the window, the vision, the knowledge, the strength of Yah that He has poured out upon every tribe of Yisraya. We are the Shebet. We are just a, a, a little uh, twig of the branch. And that is what a Shabbat is. We're just a little offshoot from the branch. And your Shua is that branch, Yisrael. So we ask the question, how have we, bazaar, how have we despised or held your name in content? Yah says, you offer unto me polluted lechem. It's not the sweet bread. It's not the bread of great fulfillment of smell. It's not sweet bread. It's a bread that it crumbles. It has no life to it. It has no flavor to the palate. Simply implying that your praises and your offerings, uh, you bring anything before me, and yet you want me to accept that. I know your plight, but I want you to consider Esa. The Edomi. I want you to consider them and see their agony. And although they strive and pursue to establish themselves as a great people, I throw them down to the gates of hell. I want you to understand that I've loved you, Yisraya. And although this great agony is upon you, there's a reason why. 
We must be restored back to the Dabarim, the words. And that is the promises of Yah. His Dabar, Dabarim, is simply implying his promises, the power of his authority uh, to create his Brit, his covenant, his allegiance with us, uh, and to give us assurance that he is able to fulfill all that he speaks unto us. So he gives us an example of uh, Isav. They are impoverished, and yet you are going through great agony, but you are not impoverished. Your minds are free still to understand uh, the beauty of the free offering that you can bring uh, unto me as your Abba. Again, he says in verse 7, uh, he says, You have offered polluted bread upon my altar. And you say, Wherein have we polluted you? How have we brought something which is polluted? Uh, in that you say... Uh, the table of Yah is despised, it is contemptible, it is the reproach unto us. What does that imply? What Yah feeds us? We reject it and say, this is not appropriate for me. I'm of greater uh, resolve than that. I'm of a greater stature than you give me that. You can't talk to me like that. Now this is the prophet talking. This is the Nubi. This is the messenger. His name, Elihia, implies that he is an Elaka. When your sure say, be aware that we have entertained, uh, be aware how we entertain strangers. Because we have entertained a melech or melechim unawarely. It is not talking about a drunk or some harlot. When he, when he is implying that you have, you have to be careful how you, uh, you, you reply to a messenger. Because you don't even know one like melechia. He is a melech. And the melech of Yah is the ministering ruach of Yah. He is the one that guards uh, and makes sure that the ruach, Yah is ruach, isn't he? And so when he dispensed that portion of him, there are guarding Melikim to make sure that it enter into the minds of the messenger and permeates them, that they speak as Yah is speaking. Is he correcting them here? He is. Now we are a nation that despises any kind of Muzah, any kind of counselor. That is what Muzah is. That is what the counsel of Yah is. The word Musa is to reprove, to repudiate, to rebuke, to inspire, to uplift. That's what it implies. But we of our own grandizing nature, we don't think that we are deserving of any kind, uh, any kind of accolades that, uh, that are reproachable unto us. Because uh, I esteem myself much more grander than that. We are damn fools what we are. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Yah says, I want to ask you a question. If you offer that which is avrith, blind, that which has no sight or insight, if you offer that which is blind for a zebach, for that which is acceptable unto me, is it not evil? Are we that blind that we cannot see our own nature and see the riches of Yah? Have our flesh literally blinded us uh, that we have contempt for Yah through the power of your sure that the many afflictions of the Sadiq, uh, but yet Yah deliver us out of them all? Are we that despising of Yah's Torah? Are we that bazaar that we don't even regard Him that our questions of Yah is of such contempt? Is that the nature of Yisrael? Well, certainly it is. That's why he must always send the true Nobi. I am not a prophet. I'm a simple messenger of Yah's truth. Yah says, is not that Ra? Is it not evil? Is it not? You know what the word Ra really implies? Uh, there is an evil be, evilness beyond your comprehension to understand or even associate it with you. I was thinking, can I say this as you're sure in the midst of all of his Talmudim, those that were following him for the bread. He took, he took a child and put the, the child in the midst. And he says, unless you become as one of these little ones, and he uses the words, taf, small, those that have nobility uh, to influence 
to dictate. He said, you were in no wise errant to the knowledge uh, of the Melchur HaShema and the kingdom uh, of heaven. And so uh, as we watch the little ones, uh, can I give us an example? And I don't say this because this child sits with me. I watch this child when his children come to visit Ara'ak here. And I watch this child, I, I, I watch it because I think it's so beautiful and so magnificent. I say, yeah, I wish Yisra'ah ya had that nature and that propensity. When they come in, they may come a little late because she used to sleeping a little late. I will watch this child walk over to her and she will begin to talk to her. Do you want me to get you some water? I'll get it. Do you want some water, Melon? Is this all you want? I'll get you some water. I'll be back. She'll go get her some water. And when she passes those little ones, she's doing my move now. She gives them a little greeting. So she'll bring her back water. She says, is that all you want? You want some water, Melon? You want that? I'll get it for you. I'll go get it. And I watch her nature to serve that child, both of them. She does it all the time. 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 Oh, you're esteeming her. I'm esteeming uh, the attitude of what I see there. I'm not going to reject that. I don't give a damn what we think. And the tenderness in her approach to that child, you want that? Okay, I'll get you some. You like those potatoes? Oh, they're, they're, they're tough. All right. You're right. That's how she approaches her and talks. I see it. And I sit there. I don't say a thing because I marvel because it is a beautiful thing to see. And she does it all the time. And that is the truth. I don't give a damn how we feel about that. We must acknowledge that which is right, appropriate, and proper. And we learn from that. I do. I like that. Hallelujah. Proceeding, Father. Can I begin here again in verse 8? If you offer the blind for the zabach, or the zabach, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame, that which is khali, sick, which is diseased, which is not healed, what does that imply with us? That our offering of tada uh, is one that there is uh, animosity and sin. Uh, we have this keli. Our hearts are dressed with uh, a superficial motive. Uh, we're not sincere. We're false. Uh, we're superficial. Uh, that's what this is implying, Yisraya. We pretend we have this great uh, uh, appetite of love for one another. And we know that deep rooted and seated in us, uh, we're lame. In my day, we will say that you're a lame man. It was when one did not act appropriate according to the protocol uh, of that activity. When they came any other way, a hey, hey, player, you're a lame man. This lame cat, get off from me, man. That's how we express it. So will you offer the lame and the sick? Is it not evil? Is it not raw? Is not there evil lurking in your mind? And then he says, okay, if it's appropriate, if it's acceptable, he said, offer it now unto your governors. Offer it unto those that are in authority. If Mr. Barack Hussein Obama visit you, would you offer him a rotten dead chicken? Would you cook beef that has been, uh, that has died of itself uh, and the maggots are crawling in it? Would you not offer up words of appreciation and acceptance unto him? Well, the Torah tells us are all men. We have opportunity to do all men. Would you offer that unto the governor? But our state, yeah, although your state is of that degree, yet when you come before the governor to pay your tributes, you don't bring that. But when you come to pay tributes to me, you bring that which is lame and crop. It's almost amazing how that when we entertain the world, uh, we offer them accolades of great acceptance, don't we? Yeah, uh, yeah. Here when it comes to Yisraya, we frankly don't give a damn. Yeah. It is imans. He said, if that is acceptable, 
offer it to the governor. Would you offer your guests that? What I cook, I want to do something that is extremely fulfillment, fulfilling to the palate. I don't want to just cook anything. He said, offer it to the governor. Will he be pleased with you if you offer him that? Who wants to sit down at someone's place uh, and then they're giving you something that is maggot infested? You can smell the stench that is so vile and raunchous that in the days that Granny would say will cause you to upchuck, to vomit. I remember many years ago, Zachin, in his issue, the only one in my issue, we went to do some work for someone in Oklahoma. And they had butchered a goat, male goat, that was in the prime of the time of the rut season. That he is running after the nanny. And so his body, as you walk through the path at time, you all sense this aroma that is pungently sickening. And so they had prepared a goat and the meat. What could you say? It was pungent as the smell of the male goat. It was sickening, but because of their kindness, we did eat it. But then Rafia and Zakia, they did something fabulous the day or two later. And everyone were excited about the meal after that. Believe me, we were eating that. So we eat the beauty of the, of the delicacies of Yah Yisrael. Hallelujah. Again, he says, will the governor be pleased with you or accept you, your personage, saith Yah of Shava. And now I pray, I pala, I intrigue, I, 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 I ask of you, beseech Yah. That he will be kind and tender his uh, mercies, his rahan unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your person, says Yah of hosts. Verse 10, quickly. Who is there even among you who would shut the doors uh, for nothing? Neither do you kindle fire. On oh, my altar for nothing. Yah's implying there's nothing you do for me without a great reward that I do not restore upon you. You don't even come to the fire without my promises uh, being manifested unto you. So when we allow the fire of this Torah to be lit in our bosom, uh, it brings about a great riches of abundance uh, unto Yisra'ya. <clears throat> He's I have no pleasure in you, saith Yah of Hosea. Neither will I accept an offering of your hand. Hear this. From the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name, my Hashem, my name, Yahweh, Almighty Yah, he says, it shall be Gadul, great among the Goem, the nations, the heathens, the Gentiles. And in every place, incense uh, shall be offered unto money. And he wants us to offer a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathens, uh, says Almighty Yah. He wants the offering that is uh, of great pleasure, knowing that there is no thing that has happened unto us uh, that Yah is not the master of that ordeal. He is the one that creates. If he created all things, then he created that moment. If the hair of our head are reckoned, they are numbered. Don't you know the days of our lives are reckoned and they are numbered? And so through all of the agony of Yisra'ya, he says, I want you to consider Esav or the Idumea. 
their great strength, uh, their masculinity, their power to create, to build. Uh, I bring it down to the dearth of darkness. Uh, and yet in the midst of all of that that you are in Karkwa, that you're going through, uh, there is bread, there is rachim, uh, there is a offering that you can bring unto me. Uh, but what has happened, you have become laxadesia. It has no value because uh, of the small things uh, that you're encountering uh, that you don't realize that I am the one. Uh, if I brought down Esau, uh, don't you know that I lift you up as well? Uh? And we don't comprehend that real well. And so we think that our circumstances are tantamount to something that is so grave that no one understands. Go to hell. When I consider the, consider the mass of the multitude of people and their great afflictions and what we think we're encountering that we will matter, I want Yah. I am holding that wood. I bless Yah when I see that big pile. When I see that wood pile diminishing, I know it's over there. That will keep us warm. And I like that. And every time the man loads me, I grab his hand, I give him a shake. And he gets excited. And I give him, ah, thank you, man. He responds that way to me. So if we are not, if we are not appreciative of the small infractions, in the midst of captivity, then we will have disdain for the bondage. There is a window that Yah wants to open. I will get to that in a moment. I, I want us to understand that we know that this lie that has been perpetrated by these liars, they're talking about the windows. It is a singular opening. It is not a plurality. And Yah says, see if I will not open up A. Now, I am not a grammatics expert. But I do know in my learning that the word or the function of that word a, it is a word that function or it is a function word that precedes or that it is before what we call a noun. And it gives a specific function of the noun. So if I say there is a city none like Jefferson, South Carolina, that's beautiful. I'm talking about a Pacific. It is the function of the beauty of Jefferson, South Carolina. No other city like Jefferson, South Carolina. No other city that has the grandeur and the beauty like Jefferson, South Carolina. And so Yah is talking about a Pacific. Now the Nobi could not teach on that unless he knew what the prophets before him and the message of Yah before him uh, was spoken. So he had to have an in-depth wisdom of what uh, was already written uh, in order to speak unto them concerning the window and the blessing. Can I read a little more from uh, Malachi? I will get to it. I promise you that. Hallelujah. It says here in the book of Malachi uh, chapter 3, and this is Yah, he is reproving that house of Yehuda Yisrael because of the great corruption. They were saying that Yah doesn't see me so I can respond this way, I can offer this. And so the order of the Levi, the offerings, they had lost inspiration as a, what the Torah command, just like we today. We lose inspiration. And yet we are inspired by that which produce nothing. We're inspired by a damn chicken bone. That dogs don't even like that because it is not the best bone for a dog. And we're inspired by chicken bone. Yet when it comes to Yah, when his utterance unto us, uh, when his amir, his amir, the utterance of his voice, uh, the utterance of Torah, the utterance of his instruction, that he speaks profoundly unto us, uh, it doesn't excite the love of Yisrael. But look at the prophet here, as he speaks in Malachi chapter 3 verse 7. He again informed them concerning the days uh, of their avat. He says, Yah says, uh, even from the days, the yom of your avatar, you have gone away from my hook, from my statues, from the generality of Torah. You have gone away from that. 
He says, and you have not shema, you have not kept, you have not guarded uh, my statutes, Melikia chapter 3, verse 7. You have not guarded my instructions uh, as though one takes a hedge of thorns uh, and fence around that thing uh, and to make sure that the wild beasts and the animals uh, do not trot it down. Uh, in essence, uh, if we guard it or Shema, Shema, like your commands, uh, then our beastly nature will not trample that down, uh, that we devour it and we go beyond uh, and we approach Yah as to what he instructs us, Yisrael. That's our nature. We must become like one of these little ones if we expect to enter into Hashemayim, into the kingdom, into the kingdom of his knowledge. You will never grow. You will never mature. If we as a nation cannot take the constructive criticism, is this not you criticizing this people? Was he there or was this his messenger, Melechia? It was Melechia. And when we're superficial, when we think in the surreal dynamic, we don't see the falseness of our nature and our state. I find this a very reckless, immature generation of people. Where are the math? We need men. Math. Men of great strength, courage. Men that when the sword pierces through their heart, they pull it out and they allow the healing of your Torah to malify them. You don't find that today, and it's sad. It makes my heart cry, Yisrael. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, you have gone away from my hook. He said, you have not kept them. And then he speaks unto us. He says, shoop, shoop, turn, return, return to me. Do it expeditiously with great delight, with a gleefulness. When I was a kid, we would sing that game. How did it go? Jump down. Turn around, pick a bell of cotton. Jump down, turn around, pick a bell of day. And we will get excited about that. Uh, we think that that is so harsh. There are people that work in mines. Little children his age all day, 15 hours a day. We are a damn stupid, silly people that cannot recognize and we cannot phantom circumstances that are beyond what we have gone through. When we were seeing that as a kid, it was fun to me. When I was a kid, it was a fun picking cotton. I wanted to outdo everyone. I had a tenacious nature. I did because I knew that granny, it would be of great value to the very strength of the family. And I would pick cotton. I didn't despise it. Hallelujah. If Yah ordained a situation for us, we should never despise it. He said the Yisra, when you go into the mountain or the land of Seir, of Ada or the Edomite, he said you buy water from them. Don't mock them. Don't say a damn thing. Don't meddle in their business. You just do it. We're silly. Hallelujah. That's the attitude of his nation, his people. There's a window that needs to be opened to see the riches collectively, what you mean. Not some damn shack of bricks and houses. There is something that is greater than that. Return, re, move it on. Yah says, return unto me. And then he said, I will return unto you, says Yah of Sabah. I'm the one that go forth. I'm the one that has the might of warfare, welfare. I'm the mighty one. But we say to Yah, and what? And what shall we make? Tashuva. Uh, Why should we repent? What have I done wrong? Isn't that the repro that's the that's the attitude of all people? Tell me what I've done wrong. What have I done wrong? You said that to me. Why? I I'm better than that. No, we're not. This is a generation because of their own weak nature. I will not apologize for my words. 
I will apologize for your weakness and your inability uh, to hear the very beauty of what was said. Uh, that is strengthened any time that y'all speaks to us. Uh, it is to fortify us and refortify us that we have strength for the task that is ahead. I remember this, and I'm going to teach tonight. I met this elderly Caucasian, this Gentile. He was then at the store. He was about 80 some years old and he looked very fit. He was a fit man and he was very loquacious. He talked. And of course, when I meet old timers like that, I tend to give them space because I understand uh, that there's a plethora of experience they have experienced. And he said to me, he said, you know, we would pick cotton all day long. Daddy said to us one day, boys, I tell you what, you all go out there and pick a certain amount of cotton. I give you all, both of you 50 cents. He say he and his brother, they took off like two jackrabbits. And they went that day before the day was done. They had picked every bit what daddy said. And so it came time for their payment. They went to daddy. And daddy said, boys, one thing I do know that... Uh, you can't pick 50 cents worth of cotton a day and you can pick that many pounds. So I'll tell you what, you pick that every day, all right? He did not give them anything at all because he knew what was in them. So in order to exact that from them, he had to use some persuasion. So if yeah, it is pers persuasion offends us, uh, or we think it is some form of denigration, hell, what are we? We are stinking vile things, all of us. We are despicable. You don't have to say, oh man, but it's still the truth. Hallelujah. So if he corrects us, then we rejoice. And we bless you. Was Melakia a man? He still got to use man. I'm glad. I don't want some strange thing coming to me. Doth Vida. Some kind of damn twisted demon. <laughs> That'll make you want to run. Something out of the deep dungeons of hell. We began to talk from our own reservoir of our corrupt mind. We draw from some of the most repugnant, wicked things that we can draw from. He wants us to return unto him and make teshuva. Then he asked a question. As I read there, we must understand the totality of what was written before this verse. We must look at Hoshea. We must look at the writing of uh, uh, Tisiphaniah. We look, must look at uh, Zechariah. And all of this is, uh, is in concert with what Melakiah was saying. Uh, we have been taught to understand Torah in a lazy approach. It takes a little labor in Yisrael. You just don't get this from reading it. And that's the truth. Yah says, well, Ben Adzom, will a man, he said, will the man come out? Will he rob, exact, take from me through his uh, conniving, corrupt way? Will a man rob Yah? And he says, yet you have robbed me. Now listen, Yisrael, Yah, he said, you have robbed me. I know how these beasts, I call them mamzir, they are bastards, how they have robbed the houses of many. I want you to hear me. He said, will a man rob me? What was he talking about? But you say, wherein have we robbed you? Yah says in the He said, in your tithing. In the tenth or the payment of the tenth part. What had happened? They had become so disillusional. Their lives were certainly unraveling they were under this tyrannical reign of the persians uh, they saw no moving of yah saying where are you father and so those that were in charge of the order of the service of yah they began to become less enthusiastic about yah as we are today and so the people began to bring that which was lame and halted and blinded and so that which was needed to make sure that the service of the bay at the house of Yah was uh, appropriated, they did not do that. And so those that were in command and charge of that order, they began to lose sight 
of what Yah commanded them to do. And so, in essence, they allowed anything that was corrupt. They didn't care whether they brought the tenth part of the payment of the house of Yah, or whether they brought nothing at all, whether they brought something that was lame and corrupt, something that was sick. Yoshua said to render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. You pay your taxes, uh, which you bring the governor a cup of corn that has no face, no, you will bring that which is proper and appropriate uh, unto the governor. Well, I don't believe that I tell you, well, don't pay your taxes then. And see what happens. Moving on. He said, because of that, uh, you have robbed me in tithes uh, and your teruchna, your offerings uh, or the contributions that are needed uh, for the house of Yah. And then he tells them in verse 9, he said, you are cursed, you are arab, you're despicable, you stink in my nostrils, uh, you are cursed with a mihre, with a curse. For you have robbed me even this whole. Now he's talking to all 12 tribes. You understand? We must understand that. We must all must be in concert with that. He said even the whole nation. He was not talking about the kingdom of the Persians. He was talking about Israel. Even this whole am. The nation of people. And then he tells them, he says, I want you to bring all coal, the fullness, uh, that which I have asked, commanded uh, of you. I want you to bring all of your ma'asir, all of your tithe into the atsa, into the storehouse, into the place of abundance and much, into the place whereby it is stored so there is uh, a time to retrieve, uh, into the storehouse uh, that there may be teref. That there may be food, there may be substance, that may be plenty, there may be enough, that we may eat in the time of great adversity, in a time of great agony, dearth and pain. So he tells us to bring all. That there may be food, Yisrael, that there may be meat in my house. And this is the thing that he commands. I know what the world has done with this. He uses the word, I want you to baham. I want you to bahan. I want you to prove me. I want you to scrutinize mine. We scrutinize them enough, don't we? I want you to scrutinize me. I want you to try me. I want you to bahan, to test. Prove me, Yah says. I want you to prove me. He says, now in this thing, in just that one action, prove. Prove me. I want you to scrutinize me. You have gone away from the offerings of my house. My house is broken down. Look at our spiritual houses today. Are not we the house or the bed of the Ruach HaKodash? Is there food for the Ruach to eat on? We know that Yahshua says that when the Ruach HaKodash come, he will not testify of himself. But he will testify of those things which he has Shemach. He has heard. And so if we're not, if the Ruach is not hearing the meditation uh, and the reverberation of Torah from our bosom, uh, then what does it feed on, Yisrael? In this bear, there must be food. So when Yah come, we must offer up the offering uh, that is acceptable, not this damn folly and silliness and drunkenness of wickedness not our hatred and uh, our vile nature of corruption you say you love me and you know you have corruption in your damn bosom you're sick devilish and you're wicked it is one thing about the passion of a hamb it is like an inferno it causes one to be drawn with great confidence. And an ish or truly loves a ish. And an ish truly loves his ish or there is a great trust. You don't have to hear me. 
I'm glad that I don't have to get a salary. But I'm not worried about you sending nothing to substantiate the works of Yahweh because it's not built on money. It's not. Everything that he commanded them was not the money. It was to shemach, to hear, to understand what he spoke unto them. Hear me, Yisrael. Hallelujah. He says in verse 10, Melchiah 3.10, he says that you bring it all unto me, prove me, or Bahan, I want you to examine me, I want you to try and scrutinize me now in just this one thing. Uh, he identifies that he is the great one of Sabah. And then he says, uh, if I will not, uh, if I will not cause to be loosened, if I will not, if I will not open, not only does it imply to be opened, but Yah says, see if I will not throw it open, just like he said, he will throw down the heritage of Esav. He says, see if I will not throw open. Look now, not windows. He said, you the windows, the arukba, the windows of Shema'am. And then he uses the word here, ruch, to see if I will not pour out, to cause the heavens to be empty, to cause the riches of Yah that I will not pour out unto you uh, I will not cause the heavens to be empty and even the heavens to be hungry I will not pour out unto you uh, he did not say some but a this function word in our vernacular he tells them what a a blessing that there should not even be room dahi enough uh, there should not be, not the space for the abundance of your mind, your heart, to, to comprehend the breadth and the depth and the magnitude of the power of Almighty Yah. There was a blessing poured upon each of the sons of Yisrael. And collectively, we in concert with each other, as those riches are poured out, or that window of that riches, that we collectively we bring us all into the abundance of the magnificence of the eclipse of Yah's power. Because as the old saying, everyone brings something to the table. And every son of Yisrael brings something to the table. And for us to understand that, we must go back to the Bereshit to understand that Yisrael. <clears throat> Hallelujah. See if I will not pour at you or ruch, cause the heavens to be empty of the abundance, to pour out you a berakaya, a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to dachim. It will be so abundant with such great riches, not just for that moment, but for often. It shall come. Your mind shall be restored back to the testimony, the Eda of Yah. We are so easy to lose sight of the testimony of Yah. We are so easy to sell him out over an emotion or a superficial feeling. This is a sick, silly generation. It really is. I watch it. I say how sad, how sick, how immature we are. I don't know because I'm getting older, I can see things in a little different dimension that when I was younger, more aggressive, stronger, physically, with tenacity of, of uh, not of arrogance, but of certainty. And so there are things now that I can't rely on. As when I was younger and immature, and I'm still immature and ignorant as they come. That's why there must be a continuous process for me of laboring constantly, all the time. I must do that. You understand? No time for damn video games and plan with a senseless, frivolous activity that consume my time. 
Nah. It's all right for what you all do, Dom. All right. We greet you all in your shoes. Mighty name is Ryan. I want to give us a little enlightenment here, and then I want to get into the depths of this blessing of Yah. Shaul makes a statement here in the book of Romans, Romeyam. And this when Shaul, Romans chapter 15, one verse here, when he had purpose in his heart led by Yah to travel beyond into Shepharat of what we would call Spain. He makes a profound utterance here unto Yisraya, the nation of Yah's elect scattered among the Goem, the nations, the heathens, the Gentiles. And he says this, again in Bereshit, he says, if I will not pour out, pour blessing, a, a blessing, that there should not be room enough to see. Not blessings now. But he said, I will pour the blessing of Yah. I will cause the words to reverberate in your conscience and your mind to bring you back to the hook, the statutes, to the general principles of the Torah, that you're sure brought us and enlightened Yisraya unto. He said, if you love me, then keep my saying, keep my words, keep what I utter unto you. Remember what I said, I want you to zakha, to allow that to become a zikron, a zikron that you build. It's like this. We are people that we do build zikrons. We cause our children to be our zikron. We're always mindful of them. They're always in our conscience. They're always in our thoughts. Our mama, our daddies, our brothers, and our sisters. But yet when it comes to Yah Yahushua, He barely penetrates the veneer of our corrupt minds today. And so Zikron is an altar that uh, is built in our conscience uh, that we're constantly offering uh, up offerings to. Well, what is that? Well, your child is a Zikron that you're constantly reminded of your child, uh, of that when you worry about them. You silly thing. You worry about a damn fool. Not me. Hallelujah. And that is the truth. I don't care how you take it. It is the truth. Jau makes this profound utterance here. He says, Romea, Romans 15, 29. He says, and I am sure. I like that. There's no doubt there's a certainty. There is uh, unequivocally uh, a statement that I stand on. I am sure. I am sure that when I come to you, he says, I shall come. This is what this man said. I'm absolutely certain, unequivocally, there is no doubt, there is no question, there is no compromising. He said, I am certainty without any reservation that when I bow, when I enter among you, enter into your hearts by the hearing of the Torah, when I come in, when I shall come in the fullness of the blessing. What is the fullness of the blessing? He said of the message, the Bezurach of Yeshua HaMashiach. He said, when I enter in among you, that uh, hallelujah, that are at He said, I will come to you in the fullness of the blessing of the truth of Yeshua HaMashiach. Yah said, bring that which is acceptable unto me. Bring me the tenth part. And see, well, if I will not open up the windows of heaven to pour you out a blessing, the blessing, that there shall not be even room enough to receive. Even in this hour, the heart has no room to receive the fullness of Yahshua HaMashiach. That is the blessing. The fullness of the revelation of Yahshua, Shaul again says here in the book, of Romea. And I'm sure that when I come, when I come into you, I shall come in the fullness of not just a blessing, but this function, the blessing of the message of Yahshua HaMashiach. 
Uh, God in the book of Melchia, chapter 3, verse 10. He says, and Yah will cause the windows of Shema'am to be open." And he says, and I shall rook you out a blessing. Does it say that in the translation? They both have the function of a Pacific before them. He said, I will come to you in the fullness of the blessing, not blessings. I will come to you in the fullness of the blessing of your sure Hamashiach. Of this power of Torah that was granted unto us by the one that was the Torah giver. That your cause is light to shine before him, Moshe. And in this one that I come in, in that fullness, uh, it will cause the light of revelation or the awe of the revelation of Yeshua to shine light with wisdom and understanding uh, upon the Torah of Yah. And then you will understand the vitality and the importance of the offerings. We don't even offer up the offering of Todah and to Yah with excitement. When I worked on the job, my last job, I'm not lying, I will give them 110-20%. But I am not working on the weekends. I will not work. These give you 20%. I do what I do with a gusto, with energy. Because first of all, I'm very appreciative to have a job here. And to make the money I make and to take care of my home. And I'm not going to come in here give you 20%. I will give you more than you ask of me. And so when it comes time for me to have my Shabbaton, you're not going to interfere with that. And so do we bring before Yah that we give uh, 90% of our energy and time to folly and trivial and mature actions? And yet when it comes to Almighty Yah, we bring uh, this fledgling, putering, offering of nothing. That we're not even excited about bringing the Zabak. That we go beyond the limitation of our damn corrupt, stinking, vile flesh. And move beyond our little insecurity. Something is twisted in us. Any time you speak anything to inform a wise man or woman of their of their purity, of the smallness of their nature, they become wiser and they love you with a greater intensity. You cannot speak to one that of their own degree of folly think, that thinks very highly of themselves. They will, they will cause a blot to come upon you. It will cause you to even question your sincerity and your love toward them. That's not what Yah wants. We must bring the offering. The 10% offering represents even when Abraham met Melchizedek, that he knew that this was a messenger of Yah. He had something greater than he had. And he had a door that he could open that Abraham had not opened. And so when the message of the fullness of the blessing of the blessing, the blessing of Yeshua, come unto us. When that enter in, when that enter into our bosom, then we offer unto Yah, regardless of what tribe or Shabbat you are from, then you offer or cause the window to be opened, and out of the fullness when Yah empties out the heavens unto you, then you offer unto Him that offering which is a Thing of grandeur in the sight of Yah. We don't do that. And we have great respect for our own wickedness. And it's wrong. I'm not going to finish this tonight because this is too vital to try to conclude in one teaching. I was hoping that this is a four or five hour teaching. And so I, but I want to proceed here. I'm glad that Shaul came to us. In the fullness of the blessing 
of the Bizurach, the teaching, the wisdom of who? A Moshiach. A Moshiach. He came in the fullness of that blessing. Not those blessings, but that blessing. And so in order to understand that scenario, that truth, we must be guided with the one that he offered unto him or he imparted unto him uh, the power to dispense the Torah revelation to people, Moshe. And I want to begin here in Devarim. Deuteronomy, is this all right? Yeah. We greet you all in your shoes, mighty name. If it's not, it's still all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Who, who locked castor oil? I know I did not. But I tell you just a little bit of piece of that old heart. And they would have those uh, peppermint canes that were that big and they were hard. Not this soft mess you buy today. It was peppermint. And I tell you, Granny would keep a stick of that and break just a little piece off. You did not get much. And what a great delight it was just to get that little piece. Uh, and that old castor oil, it tastes repugnant. Uh, it had no beauty to its taste. But I tell you, that peppermint made it go down with a great delight. You knew once you swallowed it, the peppermint was coming next. And that made it so wonderful. Hallelujah. Your shoe is coming, so we must receive all the your commands. Here's a mob that you raised up. In the midst of a kingdom and a great dilemma. They have been thrust out of a land. Whereby they had the abundance of the garlic, the fish, the oil and those things that cause them to become somewhat laxadaisia in their offerings unto Yah. So he had to move and to uproot them. That's what he's going to do with this nation of his people. And so that's why there are afflictions and trials that come to uproot us and to move us from this lethargic na nature we have. A little falling of hand, a little sleep, uh, and then we become just like Esau. We become impoverished. We become poor. We become poor spiritually. Just a little folly playing around. Then there is no true energy for Yah, is it? There are things that the world do, and they do it with great gusto and great energy. They do it consistently. And so for us to understand this Scenario of this great utterance of prophetic wisdom from Melchia, then we must go to Devarim. And I want to begin here in Devarim, chapter 33, and verse 1. And first of all, in this, uh, this beautiful rendition of Yah unto Moshe, of the fullness of revelation of Moshe's heart. He began, first of all, by acknowledging the Abba to speak of his excellence, his beauty, the splendor, the magnificence of Almighty Yah. So he began here in Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. Again, Shaul said, I come in the fullness of the blessing. As he said that, was that not read in Rumiya? Look at what Moshe says here in Devarim, Deuteronomy 33, 1. And this is uh, the Bercha, the blessing. Is that not what Shaul said? I come in the fullness of the blessing or blessings. He said blessing. I come in the fullness of the blessing. And Moshe says, and this is the blessing Wherewith Moshe, the man of Yabrach, the bane of Yisroyah, before his muth, before death seized upon him, before life was extracted from his lungs, until there was no ruach in his loins. 
that he ceased and he rendered unto death because of the appointment of our Abaya. It is appointed unto every man to once die. And then the Mishpatim, the judgment of Yah. So this is the blessing. Did not Melekiya speak of the same blessing? We must understand the blessing, Yisraya. It is not some damn Cadillac car or some house you pay him $5,000 a month. House payment. That is uh, of the nature of Hashatan. As he said to Yoshua, if you just fall down and acknowledge that I am Hashatan and there is no God but me, uh, you see all of these kingdoms, you see, all the riches of them I will grant it unto you. Because I have the power to make rich. I have the power to make desolate. I have the power to esteem, and you know that. And there is not a damn thing you can do because I know, and you know, my friend, there's a time. He did not even know even the nature and the power of this Hamashiach. Because if he had known, he would have never allowed him to be impaled. So this was his experimentation. That's why he's always experimenting with the mind of Yoshua. How? By our emotionalism, our feelings. Damn our feelings. Damn your silly emotional setback. You get upset, then get over it, silly man. Silly woman. This as fast as you got upset, uh, you get over it that fast. Uh, and carry this damn trash in our bosom. Uh, I don't want that trash in me. I want to live. Just right, yeah. I want to live. I, I don't want to die. You have to understand what I'm saying. I want to live. I want to have the life of this testimony so pulsating in me that I trust you yeah, despite the opposition the inquisitions of the overpowering of my own flesh and its nature that I have confidence in him. Yeah. Yeah. For me to live is Yoshua Habashiach. And for me to move, it is gay. I like that. All oh, that you I need is in Yoshua. Hamashiach, he satisfied all the joy of our trials, tribulation, he will supply to you. My friend, life would be worthless without Yoshua. Everything I need, I find. Yoshua Hamashiach. I like that. I like the simplicity of the ignorance of the songs that we would sing and the enthusiasm. I, I want to offer this, and I'm going to conclude here, but I want to get into the depths of this on the next teaching. You don't want to miss this. Hallelujah. I was speaking to Ach Shimri today as we went to retrieve things for the community. I was telling him this young person wrote me. I know he's young. So he asked me these questions. I said, I won't answer your questions. First of all, I know you haven't listened to me. And if I answer your question, and if it's not according to your discernment, you will come visit me, and then you think you will discern things that are not appropriate or proper. I said, I won't answer it. You listen, and then you answer the questions you ask me by hearing we need wise men we need men that know how to answer know how to speak and when to speak we need the bath of desire Divarim chapter 33 verse 1 and this is the Berachai wherein Moshe the man of Yah 
He's identified his character, his characteristic, his place in the hierarchy of Yah's government. He was a man, he was one birth for the purpose to carry the mandate of Yah, the, uh, the man of Yah that he, he berach, the children, the bane of Yisra'ah before he de- died. And this is what he said. He says, Yah shall, or Yah came, he bow, he came from Sinai, a Sinai. And he rose up from Seir, the place of Esav, to them. He tells us that he, Yaffa, he shine, or he sent out this mighty beam of light. Is not Yoshua the light? Did he not say, I am the light, the ore of this world? And men hate me because they love darkness more then they love light. And so, yeah, he sent out this beam from Mount Paron. And he came with 10,000 of his Kirushim from his right hand. Yoshua went out a fiery or this this continuous stream of fire. And that's what your shoe is. He is the fire of the living Torah of Yah. He is the fire of the Torah. He is the fire of the might of Yah. He said out of his right hand went a fiery Torah for them. It's not a fledgling weak Torah, but it is a fiery Torah. Hear this in verse 3. Yes, chen, chen, Absolutely, there is no question. There is no dissent as to what Yah has said. He says, yes, gain, good, gain. Absolutely, yes, he loved, he ahab. An expression that is beyond the natural mentality and the concept of man. He loved uh, Chabad fervently. He loved fervently. What is that? Do, do you understand what this Chabad is? It is a love that it is so sensitive that it cherish the very nature of the embrace, the camaraderie, the fellowship, and the friendship. We don't know how to love fervently. Hell, we don't know how to love. We don't know how to love. We've been trained by this false thing we call love. But he said he loved Chabad. It is a love that is so genuine that it literally cherish the association would do nothing to damage, would do nothing to assault it, to hurt it. That's love. I hate this damn stinking stuff we call love today. I hate it. I literally despise it. I hate it. Yes, Almighty Yah has love fervently. He has loved Habam. He has cherished us with a great affection. The people, Yisrael, fervently. All his Kurusham, his elect, those that are called, he said, are in your hand. He placed them in the hand of his messenger. And they sat down at your feet. Every one shall receive of your tabarim. Was the Torah of Moshe given by his own inspiration? Or by Yah? It was given by Yah. Yahshua said the words that I speak. They are not mine. But he that sent me. I speak and declare unto you the declaration of Yah. 
Declare unto you the wholeness and the fullness of your counsel. So he calls us to sit at the feet of those messengers to what? Impart the power of the Dabarim, the promises of the blessing of Yah, of the power of the coming, of the birth, as your sure enter into us. And when Yah, when he opened up the window, when he sent, when he calls the blessing of the fullness of blessings to come, in essence, the sun represents to empty out. He emptied out his heart. What man? Listen now. What man that has a son that he loves and he cherished fervently wants to give him to the death of war? No one. Be not deceived. Yah is a man of war. Are you understand? He has brought this thing down to the, to the analytical understanding spiritually to the nature of such corrupt, frail creatures and repugnant things as we are. Give me a, a minute or two, all right? I could teach this all night here. I'm just getting warmed up. Hallelujah. Well, let me, let, let, I want to find, I want to close right here. Hallelujah. Two verses, verse 4 and verse 5. Moshe commanded his servant. He had the authority. He had the jurisdiction of Yah. And he operated within the confines of Yah's jurisdiction. Yahweh, uh, Moshe commanded us, not some. Uh, Ibrahim 33, 4. He commanded us a Torah. A Torah is a wisdom of life that is expressed from the, from the mind of Yah. There are limitations and orders and generalities and, and consequences and, and knowledge that, that has come from Anjah. He has given us a Torah. Even, even, listen, are we the people of Yah? With this word he has given us, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There are 12 tribes, there are 12 windows, there are 12 gates, you understand. Hear me, Yisra'ya, I will pour you out a blessing. Listen, he said, he commanded unto us a Torah, even the inheritance of the congregation of Yaakov, not the inheritance of Esau. But the inheritance of the congregation, the helep, the elect, the call, the assembly of Yaakov, Yisra'ah, hallelujah. And this is what he has done. And then we will begin in verse 6, next teaching. I got to teach this. Don't let me forget. Because I have a message here. I say, did I teach that? I was looking. I got all these messages right here. I said, I haven't taught that. And I wanted to teach this. But I'll teach this, all right. So if I move on, you all just have to forgive me. But I won't move on on this one, all right. Hallelujah. Verse 5, hallelujah. All right, I'll mark this right here. I want to close it verse 5 because I don't want to proceed from there because I want to go through the remainder of this chapter and show you the blessing, all right. He said in verse 5, and he was, he was Melech. He was king in Yeshurun. That is an intimate, intimate name of Israel, of his people, of Yeshurun. He says, uh, and this name, uh, it really expressed the very characteristic of Israel. He says, and he was a king uh, in Yeshurun when the heads of the people, hear this, when the heads of the people and the Shabbat, the tribes of Yisra'ah were gathered together. Now, is not Yoshua the king? Is not all the tribes of Yisra'ah gathered together? And from every tribe, there is one here in this small assembly, and those that are listening, uh, that we are gathered together under the authority uh, and the headship of the fullness of uh, the blessing uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, for he is the Torah giver, the inspiration of the Ruach of the Torah. We shall go from here and show you the blessing upon the head of Yisra'ah collectively, that when we understand this, we are overwhelmed, and the riches of Yah flow beyond some house that some devils have built, some wheels that we drive to think that that Gives us some kind of high class 
status. That's silly. That's stupid. I'm glad I've never thought like that. Yabrok you all Yisraya, I'm going to stop there for this evening on Chatzve Imat. We welcome you all to Chatzve Chatzuv Imat, scripture, scripture, scriptures of truth. So this is Chatzve Imat. We welcome you all, you that have joined us, the riches of Yah rest upon you, the small congregation of his elect, the Chroshim. We greet you all in your Yeshua's mighty name. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. May he and cause great sleep to come upon us. Ya Barak, let us stand to our feet. In all things, we debarak you as we turn toward Yerushalayim. In your Yeshua's mighty name, we turn to you for all things. Yah, guide us, protect us all. Your Yeshua's name, watch over Yisrael, your people, your nation of your elect. Grant unto us the Barakhaya, the blessing, as we shall bring knowledge of this with the closure. In your Yeshua's mighty name, we barak you for all things. Hallelujah. 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 We confirm that with Omein, Omein, Omein.